Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this session on IPM aptitude test uh, which was conducted by IIM Indore today uh, 23rd of May 2024 across India. This examination was conducted in a very smooth manner and uh, based on the feedback that we have received from our numerous students it was done in a very smooth manner without any problem at all at any uh, for any of the students who have written the exam. Now this particular exam is a pretty important exam for any IPM aspirant. As you know IPM is a 5 year integrated program in management and I am Indore is the most coveted place to pursue this program. And hence the importance of this program, this particular entrance exam is very high. Now before I begin with my analysis of today's examination, I would like to spend some time talking about the colleges which accept uh, this particular entrance exam scores. So there are several colleges but I am going to limit myself only to the good ones uh, or the top ones which are accepting these scores. So to begin with I am Indore uh, accepts this course and uh, in fact I am Indore was the first time in India to offer an, a five year integrated program in management. Now here I am only talking about those IIMs which are accepting I am Indore uh, IPMAT scores. Uh, as far as IIMs go, we do have IIM Rotak also, which offers an IP match scores. In fact, IIM Rotak was the second one in India to do that. And uh, later on, the latest ones to start the program were IIM Jammu and IIM Bodhgaya, uh, which uh, admit the students based on the JIP match scores. So, as far as B schools which accept IPMAT indoor score goes, I am Indore, I am Ranchi are two IIMs which accept these scores. Apart from that, Nirma University in Ahmedabad uh, is a very good business school uh, which accepts IPMAT scores. Nalsar, which is one of the prestigious law universities, also offers a five year uh, IPM program. They also accept IPMAT indoor scores, and so does IAFT uh, Kakinada. For those of you who are not familiar with IAFT, it is Indian Institute of Foreign Trade and uh, it's a very old business school. Uh, they started off in Delhi then expanded to Kolkata and uh, then they started a campus in Kakinada but in Kakinada they only offer a five year integrated program in management and uh, recently they have also announced another campus in Gujarat. So IAFT Kakinada is the place where uh, IPM program is offered. That's another good institute that the students have taken today's exam can target. Finally, TA Pi, popularly known as Tapmi, Tapmi Manipal, uh, which has got a campus in Bangalore, uh, they also offer this program, a management program uh, for people who want to pursue uh, a BBA program, a four year program, they also can apply to Tapmi in Bangalore. So these are some good options which accept uh, IIM Indore IP Mat scores. Now the pattern of the exam remained unchanged uh, for the last few years and same was the situation this year also. So we had all in all 90 questions. Uh, these 90 questions were from three sections. Uh, we had the quantitative ability, multiple choice questions, 30 questions appeared. And then we have quantitative ability, short answer type uh, questions and 15 such questions were there. So all in all 30 plus 15 you have got 45 questions that means half of the paper was based on mathematics. And then we have English uh, what they call as verbal ability 45 questions appear from here all 45 of them are multiple choice questions. So when it comes to non multiple choice questions or short answer type questions uh, they only appear in quantitative ability, 15 such questions were there. So all in all 90 questions uh, in this examination and, uh, for, uh, and remember this particular exam, 4 marks are awarded uh, for a correct answer and one negative mark is there for each wrong answer. And remember there would be no negative marking as far as uh, short answer questions are concerned. So this was the pattern that I am in the IP mat followed this year also. Now as far as this examination is concerned that was done today, let me start off with my detailed analysis of the entrance exam. So let's start off with uh, quant part, quantitative aptitude part, mathematics part. As I told you earlier, uh, there were multiple choice questions, 30 of them and 15 of them were short answer type questions. 
So all in all, there were no surprises as far as pattern and the question types which appeared in the entrance exam. So for those students uh, who have uh, completed their IP mat entrance exam preparation where, with time, they were extremely comfortable because they were exposed to all these types of questions during our classes as well as the mocks that time has conducted. So they were very comfortable with uh, uh, this particular section. And in terms of difficulty level though, uh, we can probably see the difficulty level was slightly higher than what it was last year. And uh, this is on the basis of feedback that we have received from numerous students of ours. As far as the breakup of questions across topics are concerned, it's more or less similar to what it was uh, the previous year. Anyhow, after some time, I'm going to share with you the uh, chapters from which questions have been given in this entrance exam. So 30 questions MCQs, 15 questions short answer type. This was the makeup of uh, these two sections. Now let's quickly have a look at the chapters from where these questions have been uh, framed. See, as far as uh, algebra is concerned, what do I mean by algebra here? I'm referring to topics like uh, functions or progressions or logarithms, uh, etc. Five to six such questions were there uh, in this exam. Arithmetic maths, they had the maximum number of questions. So topics which usually students find to be very much doable, topics like time and distance or time and work or percentages, simple interest, compound interest, etc. They had the lion's share in this exam. 10 to 12 questions from these chapters appeared. As far as pure maths goes, uh, six to eight questions were there. Now, what do I mean by pure maps? I am referring to topics like permutations and combinations, probability, coordinate geometry, trigonometry, and uh, I'll add even Venn diagram to this. Uh, these kind of questions, uh, I'm classifying them as pure maps. Six to eight questions from these areas appeared. As far as geometry and mensuration uh, was concerned, only three to four questions appeared. Uh, there were questions based on data interpretation also and that's usually the case with IPMAT uh, indoor entrance exam even if you look previous uh, the previous exams also uh, they did give DI questions in past also and uh, five questions appeared from DI and there was one set uh, of DI and again I would like to reiterate that uh, the kind of DI caselet appeared the kind of questions that have appeared from all these chapters they were very much similar to the ones that are there in our study material. Any student who had uh, focused on the material that was provided to them, who has attended all the classes that time uh, has conducted, has uh, followed all the inputs given by our faculty members, would have found this section to be very much doable uh, in spite of the difficulty level going up. Time students would not have faced any difficulty in cracking this section. Finally, Numbers uh, topic had four to five questions and there were three to four questions based on matrices also. So this was the makeup of this particular section. So all in all, uh, to conclude, I would say the difficulty level had slightly gone up. But the students who made uh, right selection of questions, who were able to gauge the difficulty level, would have found this section to be very much doable. Remember, the mocks that time had conducted, uh, we have been uh, encouraging our students to focus on test taking strategies we have shared a lot of those and those students who have applied those test taking strategies properly time management strategies properly would have found this section to be very much doable as long as you selected the right kind of questions and as long as you skipped the ones which were lengthy and time consuming you would have been able to manage this section fairly comfortably now moving on to the next section uh, when it comes to verbal ability, I would say overall the difficulty level was easy to moderate. That means while yes, uh, quite a few questions were easy, very much easy, very much uh, quickly you would, be, you would have been able to solve them. There were also few questions which can be classified as moderate in terms of a difficulty level. So total number of questions as I mentioned earlier also were 45. There were no surprises at all. They were very much similar to the kind of questions that have appeared in previous years in IPMAT entrance exam. Now let's look at the breakup of questions based on various uh, types. So idioms and phrases, there were four questions. And uh, again, people who have attended classes in time 
uh, you have been exposed to a lot of idioms and phrases in our course and you would have found them very much doable. Para formation, four such questions appeared. Again, they uh, basically tested the conceptual clarity of the students and as long as you had good conceptual clarity about how to go ahead with this, you would have found them very much doable. Reading comprehension, there were two passages which accounted for 12 questions and the feedback we have got from our students is the theme uh, or the subject on which those passages were based were extremely interesting and students loved reading those passages. Uh, so it's, it's a compliment for the person, for the people who have designed this year's IPMAT uh, entrance exam. The passage had very interesting subjects. Sentence correction, uh, six questions were there. So people who have uh, good clarity about grammar, grammar, English grammar and the concepts uh, associated with English grammar would have found this very much doable. There are five questions based on close passage and five to six questions uh, were apparently from para completion also. Again, uh, three more questions uh, were based on idioms. Uh, and uh, remaining five to six questions were miscellaneous uh, belonging to different types. So this was the makeup of this section. All in all, it was very much easy uh, to moderate kind of a section and definitely the number of attempts uh, would have been on the higher side. So compared to quant here, the number of attempts would have uh, been on the higher side as far as verbal ability goes. Now this is on the basis of the feedback that we have got from uh, numerous students of time. Now overall, overall analysis of ours basically says that it was quite similar to last year in terms of pattern, in terms of the type of questions that have appeared. But as far as uh, quant goes, uh, I would probably say the difficulty level was slightly on the higher side uh, when compared to last year. But don't get me wrong, it was just slightly tougher. It wasn't as if it was extremely difficult to deal with, not really the case. And as for students who have attended the classes in time, they would have definitely found this section to be uh, pretty much comfortable and doable as such. Now, let me shift my focus and share with you the cutoffs of this uh, entrance exam. See, as far as uh, uh, the process of shortlisting is concerned, uh, I am in the uh, usually has got provision of sectional cutoffs. That means you are expected to do well in all three sections of the entrance exam. So if you uh, don't do well in one section, you don't cross the sectional cutoff in one section, then you will not be considered uh, for the shortlisting process, further shortlisting process. So last year, these were the cutoffs. These are official cutoffs of last year. So as far as general category uh, test takers were concerned, uh, a quant quantitative ability, short answer time uh, had a cutoff of 12 marks. The numbers that are appearing on your screen basically are marks. So 12 marks was the cutoff for general category uh, for short answer type questions. As far as multiple choice questions based on quant are concerned, uh, 39 was the cutoff. And for verbal ability, the cutoff was on the higher side, it was 125. And uh, that's very much expect on the expected lines because verbal ability last year was also on the easier side. Now for EWS students, uh, four was the cutoff for short answer type quant questions, whereas MCQs it was 26 and verbal ability was 98 marks. So that's how it was. Uh, NCOBC 4, 23 and 91 and differently able candidates it was 4, 5 and 43. Uh, SC applicants 4, 15 and 69 whereas ST applicants it was 4, 5 and 43. And as far as number of students who were shortlisted are concerned, it was 729. A total number of students were called for interview, out of which 276 were general category students. Uh, rest of the categories, 195 were NCOBC, 83 were EWS. Uh, only 20 different able candidates were shortlisted. 109 SC applicants were shortlisted and 46 ST applicants were shortlisted. Now, these were sectional cutoffs of last year. Mind you, this year, we do expect the cutoffs in terms of marks to be similar to last year, especially verbal ability, we do believe it will be similar to last year. But as far as quant is concerned, it may be similar or it may be marginally lower than previous year. That's our expectation. Now, once you clear these sectional cutoffs, you will become part of a 
group of students will be considered for the further shortlisting process. Now, what do I mean by further shortlisting process? Let me explain that to you. Now, people who have crossed those sectional cutoffs, now they will calculate aptitude test score of the test takers. Now, what do we mean by aptitude test scores? See, what they are essentially doing is they are assigning different weightages to your performance in different sections. So 30% weightage is given to a quantitative ability MCQ section, whereas 35% weightage is given to your short answer section of quant and same 35% weightage is given to your verbal ability section performance. So that is how they are generating your aptitude test score. So some of these, uh, the addition of these, some of these would be your aptitude test scores. Now let me share with you the cutoffs that were there last year. So these were aptitude test scores cutoff of last year. As far as general category students were concerned, 43.6 uh, was the cutoff. Minimum ATS means cutoff. So 43.6 was the cutoff. EWS is plus 27.4. NCOBC was 22.5. Uh, differently able was uh, 5.7, whereas SC was uh, 14 and ST was 2.4. These were the cutoffs. Uh, maximum ATS has also been mentioned on your screen. You can uh, give a glance to that also, though the more important part is the minimum ATS because that's the cutoff at which you can expect a call uh, last year. You got a call last year. But I would like to reiterate this year, uh, the cutoffs may be similar or the cutoffs may be marginally lower as such. Uh, we do expect similar number of people to be shortlisted unless and until they, have in they increase. If they increase, then of course, number of people shortlisted would go up. So this is essentially the analysis of the entrance exam. Uh, these were the cutoffs of previous year. This year we do expect similar kind of numbers. So I hope you people did well today and uh, wish you all the best for the further process. All the best. Mm -hmm.